everyone, it's Holly, and today's video is a study with me video for thermochemistry. So if you didn't know already, I'm in the IB program and I'm taking standard level chemistry. So today's video is just going to be me making some notes for Hess's Law and some other topics in the standard level thermochemistry unit. And I'm just going to be talking about how I study for chemistry tests and chemistry exams and things like that, kind of the steps that I take to be prepared. So first of all, just make sure you're doing lots of practice questions and making notes every day after you learn part of the unit. So after class, make sure you do the questions in an every other order. So if you don't get them done, then you've done them every other question. So you've at least got through the, all of the concepts, if you know what I mean. And then after that, if you have time, finish all the questions, but also make sure you're making notes consistently because if you try to make your notes all at the end, it becomes really challenging to make them you know, condensed and concise and really with the most important things that you've learned that day. Because especially if you take notes on slideshows, like what we do in my class, then you want to make sure that the things you annotated in the slideshow get put in your note and that you can kind of combine the information in a way that works for you. So I make my notes mostly from my notes from class, but also I use the study guide as well. I find that the chemistry textbook for IB is not super well worded, like it's definitely really great for questions, but it's not the most easy for me to understand. So I use mostly just the notes we do in class and the study guide. And then another thing that I like to do before a test is to go over specific topics that I don't understand perfectly. So throughout the unit, you know, there's things that I learn and I kind of understand, but not completely. For example, in this unit, we learned about endo and exothermic reactions, which was a pretty big topic in the thermochemistry unit. So after, at, well, at the very end of the unit, I made a note that had um, a table that had endothermic on one side and exothermic on the other. And then in a big sharpie, I wrote down all the most important things from each of those topics, just to make sure I could get it in my head that endothermic was positive, exothermic was negative, you know, what types of reactions are endothermic, what types are exothermic, what does that look like on a potential energy graph, things like that. So that's what I did to go over specific topics, and I find that's really helpful in any type of unit you're doing. Next, I like to make a really concise mind map or, you know, a concise one-page note with all of the formulas or definitions from the unit. So in thermochemistry, there's a lot of formulas. There's, you know, the change in enthalpy, you know, definitions that you have to know about, you know, average bond enthalpy and heat and stuff like that. So I wrote down one page that had all of the formulas from the unit and another page that had all of the definitions from the unit. So that way it was really easy for me to look over the things that we learned in the unit without reading all of my notes at once. Another thing that's really important is to do practice questions. However, that does not mean you should go back and do every question you've been assigned in the unit because that's just insane. And especially in the second year of the IB Diploma program, it's kind of unrealistic to expect of yourself. So the types of questions I like to do are the questions that are at the back of the section for the textbook and also the ones that are that you can find online. So those would be practice IB questions that you know IB provides and uses on past exams and things like that. You can use those, the ones that are specifically from that unit, to help you practice. So I find these really helpful. There's questions in the textbook, in the study guide. Just try out different types of questions and see what works best for you to do practice questions. And of course, redo any questions that you found hard in the unit. What I like to do is while I'm doing practice questions throughout the unit, I write down the questions that are really hard either on a sticky note or a cue card or I just circle them in a highlighter to make it really obvious which ones I should redo at the end. The next thing I like to do is quiz myself on the syllabus. So if you don't know about the syllabus and you're in SL Chemistry or any IB course for that matter, the syllabus is pretty much your guide to everything you need to know. So in the syllabus, there's a couple pages for each unit. In thermochemistry, I think there was three different pages. They have understandings, applications, blah, blah, blah. But the most important part is the understandings part. So you're going to look at the understandings, and then if you have someone who can quiz you, that's honestly the best way. But if you have to quiz yourself, that works perfectly well as well. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to read one of the understandings, and then you're going to just expand upon it. So there's no right answer. It's not like you have to write it and have a correct response. But if someone can say that sentence or if you can say that sentence to yourself and then you can expand upon that sentence for a couple paragraphs of speech, if you know what I mean, you just keep like if someone says, you know, exothermic reactions are negative, you know, the delta H is negative, then you can go on and you can explain why that is, what types of reactions are exothermic, why that even matters, things like that, and then just kind of expand upon the topic, everything you know, kind of do like a verbal 
explanation because if you can explain it aloud, it's kind of like when everyone says, if you can teach it, that means you know it. If you can say it aloud, it means you know it as well as you can to be able to articulate it and to be able to explain it in words because thinking you know something and thinking, oh yeah, of course I know what that means. Then when you see it in words on a test, you never used words to explain it. So the words that you're seeing aren't really connecting with you. Whereas if you've already explained it aloud, the words you see on a test are obvious. It's like, of course, I've read lots of questions like that or I've explained it like that before. So it makes sense. And the next thing is that I like to read my notes before I go to bed. I have kind of like, not a ritual, but I, before the night before a test, I always make a list of all the things I need to do and the time it's going to take and kind of the order I'm going to do it in. And the last thing I do is always, right before I go to bed, I read through all my notes. So I'll just sit in my bed or sit at my desk for, you know, half an hour or whatever it takes and read through all of them. And as I do this, a lot of times I like to say them aloud. I find this really helps me just to hear myself say it, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, reading things aloud just to get that reading, hearing, saying it, all those different parts of learning all in one. Okay, another thing is that in the morning, right before the test, I like to read my to remember. This is another thing I forgot to mention. Okay, so I like to go over my notes the night before or go over all the questions and anytime I ever had a problem during the unit, I circled it in highlighter or I wrote it down in, in like bright colored pen, you know, don't do this, remember to write a negative sign before exothermic reactions, remember to write blah blah blah, all those different things that you'd written to yourself as notes like don't do this, make sure you do this. You put it in one big list that's a, you know, thermochemistry to remember. And then you write down all of those things in one list. You write down, you know, important ways to rearrange an equation that you, you know, had forgotten multiple times, ways that you had often made the same mistake. Because, you know, the worst thing is if you've made that mistake multiple times, you've known you'd made that mistake, you've written down don't make that mistake, and then you didn't read over not to read that, <laughs> not to make that mistake, and of course you make that mistake. So I feel like I've said make that mistake about 10 times in the last sentence, but what I'm trying to say is that if you write a to remember list and you read over all the things that are the most important mistakes you're going to have those fresh in your mind so you don't do it on the test so basically if i'm going to sum this up in a couple sentences it's really important to make notes throughout the unit and do lots of practice questions the night before a test or in the nights a couple nights before a test go over specific topics you don't understand by making a note like in big sharpie or things like that it's also really important to make a concise mind map or formulas or definitions list just to get it all in one or two pages so you can have a quick overview of it. It's good to quiz yourself on the syllabus because the syllabus is pretty much IB's guideline since it's an international program so that means that they have to have a specific curriculum and standards that everyone has to learn. So those things are pretty much gold, they're exactly what you need to know. And then read through your notes, read through your to remember, and the other thing is just to remember that to do your best and to know that whatever preparation you do, if you're confident in what you know, even if it's not perfect, even if you don't know everything, even if you've had to, you know, do other courses because you have a busy semester, it's not realistic to make yourself feel like you had to study for five hours every day leading up to the exam. It's better to do less quality studying than to do more not efficient type of studying. Be proficient when you're studying and do the things that matter the most. Read the syllabus, quiz yourself on it, say things aloud, read, write them down. Don't just passively read your notes all the time. While that's really important, it's not the most important thing. So those are my tips for how to study for IB Chemistry. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.